what's up guys, Jamie here. So I've been looking for a new monitor on the market for a while now. I was looking for a setup that allowed me to boost my productivity and speed up my workflow. And that's when I came across the LG 38WK95C 21x9 ultrawide monitor. I picked up this monitor on sale for about $1250 Canadian. And let me tell you, this is one beast of a monitor. Coming in at 30 inches diagonally and weighing in at about 9 kilograms with a stand, this monitor is absolutely enormous. It measures 35.3 inches in horizontal width and it literally feels like you're sitting in front of a windshield. Even unboxing this thing was a little bit difficult without another person to help me. Now I'm really glad LG does provide you with all the necessary cables and adapters you'll need in order to use this monitor. This includes a very large power brick, a charging cable for your power brick, a USB Type-A to USB Type-C adapter, a USB-C to USB-C cable that allow you to charge your laptop and send the signal from your laptop to your display at the same time, a HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, and a cable holder that you can clip onto the back of your monitor stand for cable management. The stand is height adjustable up to 100 millimeters and you're able to tilt it up and down from negative five to 15 degrees but you're not able to rotate the monitor one way or the other, which is a little bit of a bummer. Setting up the stand is really quick and simple. All you have to do is screw these two pieces together and then clip the stand into place like so. Now the monitor is Visa 100 by 100 compatible. So that means if you don't want to use the stand, you could have it on something like a wall mount if you wish, or even something like a monitor arm. The stand itself has a very slim profile made out of aluminum, which not only looks great, but it surprisingly doesn't take up a lot of space on the desk. So a wall mount isn't totally necessary. On the back side of the monitor, we have a good range of ports. This includes two HDMI 2.0s, two USB 3.0s, a DisplayPort 1.2, a power adapter port, a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio, and a USB-C upstream port, which is probably my favorite feature about this monitor. This is because this connection allows any Thunderbolt 3 compatible laptop to drive your monitor's display, read and write data to any other devices that are connected to your display, such as an SSD or a hard drive, and charge itself at the same time. Keep in mind that this is all done with just one cable, which allows you to keep your cable management game strong, and this essentially makes your life a whole lot easier. As far as the overall design goes, I really don't have much to say. The monitor holds a super clean and minimalistic aesthetic with its thin bezels and neatly designed stand, and the back panel is fully white, which I think makes it easier to be able to identify ports when you're plugging something in. But my only complaint is that this monitor does feel a bit cheap. Everything other than the stand feels really plasticky, and certainly does not justify the huge price tag. As for the display, it's a curved IPS panel, so that means you're going to get really good color accuracy, great viewing angles, and not to mention LG already makes some of the best displays on the market. It covers 99% of the sRGB color space, has a viewing angle of 178 degrees, and has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. So this monitor is definitely good enough for most people like you and me, but probably still not well suited enough for some professional editors. I've been using this monitor for almost 2 weeks now, and I haven't noticed much backlight bleed at all. Now the refresh rate on this monitor is 75Hz, and it also comes with AMD FreeSync. You'll only be able to get 75Hz however if you have an AMD graphics card, otherwise you're stuck with 60Hz, which is a total bummer, especially if you have an Nvidia GPU. I tried playing Fortnite on this display, and I've gotta say, the visual experience was absolutely stunning. I was able to see so much more on my screen compared to my old monitor, and I felt like it really gave me a slight advantage over other players who were playing on 16x9 screens. The input lag of this monitor hovers around 10 milliseconds, which is relatively low, so you can definitely play games on this display. This monitor also features an HDR10 mode, but it's not really true HDR. Yes, it does make a difference in image quality when you turn it on, but the monitor's average brightness is only 300 nits, which is nowhere close to what it could be. Most TVs that support HDR have a peak brightness of 800 to 1000 nits. Also, the display features an 8-bit plus FRC panel rather than a true 10-bit panel, so there's definitely a problem with LG marketing this monitor as HDR10. The resolution of this monitor is 3840 by 1600 which is kind of like 4K in terms of width, but not really 4K in terms of height. The resolution is categorized as WQHD+, 
which is a resolution that is equivalent to 3 times that of a 1080p screen. And not 4 times 1080p like your typical 4K screen. The pixel density is similar to that of a 27 inch 1440p monitor, so the image quality is definitely very sharp, and everything just looks so amazing on the screen. I would definitely recommend this to anybody looking for a new monitor. The on-screen display is controlled using a joystick. It's really easy to use, and the menu is very intuitive. You can access several things using the joystick, such as your list of inputs, game mode, different response times, and other settings. It also comes with a bunch of picture presets such as reader, cinema, darkroom, and several gaming presets, which is a nice touch. Watching widescreen movies and editing videos on this thing was just such a joy. I was able to see so much more in Final Cut Pro compared to my old monitor, and it allowed me to edit significantly faster. Widescreen videos filled the entire screen, and it was just such an immersive experience. Like I said before, it kind of feels like you're sitting in front of a windshield. With a display the size, I was also able to open up multiple tabs at once, and it really helped sped up my productivity, especially when I was grinding my assignments and doing research for my classes. So if you're a big multitasker, then this might be the monitor for you. As a big multitasker myself, I don't think I'd ever switch back to a 16x9 monitor ever again. This device also comes with built-in dual 10 watt speakers, which are Bluetooth compatible, and they're located under the display. Surprisingly, it sounded really good for monitor speakers. There was a decent amount of bass to it, and there was also a degree of richness to the sound. These are probably the best monitor speakers I've ever listened to, and here's a quick sound test for you guys. If you haven't heard of Fortnite yet, then you're probably living under a rock. On the other hand, Apple just released a huge refresh to the MacBook Pro lineup, and I thought it'd be interesting to test out if the new 2018 MacBook Pro can handle Fortnite. I mean, Apple even advertised the game on their website. Now Please keep in mind that the audio recorded into my mic does not depict what it sounds like in real life, but it does give you a good idea of what to expect. Although these monitor speakers are quite impressive, I'd assume that most people who buy this monitor will pair it with some speakers for the best experience. So the LG 38WK95C may just be one of the best all-around ultra monitors of the year, but is it worth it? Well, I personally think it was worth it as I needed the extra screen real estate to help cope with my workflow, and it comes with a lot of features that I'll use in the future. Now some of you might think, well with this price tag you can also get a dual 16x9 monitor setup but I'm not a huge fan of having two bezels cutting through the middle of my view, so this ultra wide monitor was a perfect solution for me. The resolution makes everything on this monitor look super sharp, and the image quality is nothing less you'd expect from LG. The only thing I don't like about having a 21x9 ultra wide monitor is that when I watch regular 16x9 content, there's these black bars on the side, and it just feels like a normal 28 inch monitor at that point, but I can live with it. If you're on the market for a large, high resolution ultra wide monitor, then I'd say pick this monitor up and give it a try. It's definitely got a lot to offer. That's it for this video guys. Be sure to subscribe to help my channel grow and smash that thumbs up button if you like this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.